Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Let's Play series in Hearts of Fire 4. Today we're going to be playing in the Red World mod. A mod that hasn't been updated for a few years, I think. Like last time we played it was uh, October 2018, where we played as the American Republic, as good old Jeb Bush. Today we're going to be playing as the American People's Commonwealth, uh, up here in the North, currently led by President Noam Chomsky. Uh, our first national focus. I think we might... How do, where, where, what do we have? In here, do we have anything? We don't actually have one yet. Not, nothing's unlocked quite yet, but that's okay. So the reason the mod has not been updated is because unfortunately, the uh, the previous creator, uh, Kaiser eighteen thirty one, has sadly passed away. I think he's been. I, th I think he's big. He's got. Done, he's done a lot of mods. I'm pretty sure in the past. So you know, it's sad to hear that news. Let's kind of get all these basic tanks going though. Let me just see. It's twenty ten right now. You are better light tanks. Better rifles, I think, make sense for us right now as well. We're currently at 95 factories. We have 126 manpower. Not great. 21 divisions. Are we going to get more? Political deadlock is a negative 0.4% modifier. Okay, that's not fantastic. We're going to get all of our troops together because the American Republic down towards the south. You know, it's a little bit worrying. We'll get uh, whoever the hell this guy is in charge. Send him to the south. And prepare to possibly invade Atlanta sometime in the future. We'll, uh, we'll see. So with our free factories, of course, what are we going to do? We're going to build some military installations up here in the far north. I think that just makes sense. Uh, probably, I mean, what, what are you guys actually using right now? You are the poor artillery. Why is this text in like bright yellow? <laughs> Who thought this was a good idea? Anyways, artillery and free equipment and support equipment. So basically what you would kind of expect. I also probably want to train like an armor division up here as well. I, I think for infantry we're actually fine. We just want the armor. So let's go three for you. One of you. One of you. Are you main battle tanks or light tanks? You are heavy tanks. So I'm assuming those are the main battle tanks we want to be producing. Let's say three on you as well. We're now good. Convoys. Hey, crank out a bunch of those guys. And, hey, you know what else is good? Submarines, because they're always cheap to make. And, you know what, let's also make a, uh... Let's just do some light cruisers as well. Just, you know, why not? Uh, decision available. This is all the history of stuff. It's not really too, too important. All you really need to know is that the United States really, uh... F screwed up the, the Cold War, I would say. Um, so... Let's get stuff started. President Chomsky's New Year Address. My fellow Americans, when the time comes each year to address you in this unique New Year's address, I'm always faced with something that the authors of this Commonwealth uh, would know as writer's block. There are so many struggles and issues within our nation, across the border surrounding us, and even to the seas to our east, that in the short time I've given to personally speak to my people, simply cannot allow total coverage. Which is why this great day of celebration for the world, I am forced to find the most pressing complication. At this point, I believe it lies in the Commonwealth itself. Since the revolution of eight, uh, 1988, we have taken great strides in national, social, and economic development, forging the American people Commonwealth into an industrial superpower unmatched by most around the planet. Yet at the same time frame, the political deadlock strangling Philadelphia has remained unresolved for too long and causing distress for all Americans who wish to see the government working in their favor. As your president, I, can, I cannot promise that the great political reforms of the past years as it has been my firm belief that the revolutionary period is long gone. We as a country are settling into normalcy, and yet Philadelphia has failed to move on uh, along with every other hardworking citizen. So this year, my New Year address is not directed at the millions watching from their television sets. I am speaking straight to the heart of American injustice, those who seek to bring down my presidency and everything, uh, everything that it stands for. At the expense of the average family, they see is below them. And whatever 2010 may have in store for us, rest assured that the newfound effort for the most common good is not established soon. The Office of President may have been utilized at its full potential. What do we need for resources? A little bit of chromium, we can get that from the Soviet Union, that seems okay. Get some tungsten from India, that also seems completely fine. A lot of our troops are unfortunately under strength. Do we need any, we don't need any mobilized, why do we not actually need any motorized divisions? I probably should at least have them being built, even if we don't have any factories on them at this exact moment. Be 480 tanks, 119 support equipment, a little bit of rifles, and everything else seems like it's mostly going fine. Angela Davis has been re-elected to the UAPR. Um, the southern border wall. We need a secure wall in the south. We cannot trust 
the American Republicans down here. The future of the Commonwealth. Born out of two divisions, that of the United States and that of the Communist world, the American people's Commonwealth has remained isolated for two decades. As the Soviet world order is stretched from Europe to Asia, our brothers who saw the terror of the USSR struggled to stay afloat. While many have fallen in the years past, the ideals of revolutionary socialism are still solidified in our lives of everyday Americans, as well as in many nations across the world. But in order to spread the ideal, we must ask ourselves, what is the future of the Commonwealth? Should we reach outwards across the sea? Or are we uniting to form the United States for once and all, elevate us to the position of world power that we deserve? Death to the remnants, death to the Soviets. Uh, we got... Apparently they've painted the Statue of Liberty yellow. I'm not too sure what that's supposed to symbolize. So, you guys down towards South, I know you will have... We have no information. Like, literally nothing. Okay, well... Then I think it makes sense for us to establish some sort of uh, intelligence agency. And just kind of get some information about what's happening down here in the south. So while I know this mod is not necessarily com uh, fully complete. Uh, it is mostly, I think, a, mo a fan recreation of the mod to get it kind of working with uh, modern patches. Our main goal. Yeah, 2010 Winter Olympics are being held. Our main goal is to basically unite, uh, unite the United States. After that, we'll see what we can really do. What are our modifiers here? Building a wall. Bad factory outputs, consumer goods, little crew population, which actually isn't actually really doing too much. I don't think, does it take manpower away from us? I don't think so. As far as I'm aware, like, troops are not going to be leaving the, uh, the army. But aside from that, um, appalling recognition, nobody wants to trade with us, we have corruption, apparently it's construction speed though, so that's okay. Political deadlock, which is just horrible, as well as we're standing firm, which is kind of just reducing a bunch of other popularities. So, like, what? Like, what can we do? So, we can apparently have uh, Bill Gates in charge. Uh, you are make Bernie Sanders president. You are giving, I think, power to the IWW. And you are also, like, the Cinecliffs. I'm not too sure what the difference between these two are, because I think... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure what would be the difference, really, between the IWW being in charge and the Cineclist, but it doesn't really matter. Military faction has won the convention in Ethiopia, and the chapel of Tibet has been destroyed, and Gaddafi's treasurer resigns. Oh yeah, so another big thing in this mod, for some reason, is the Libyan Civil War. Because if you go down here, you can see that Libya has a shit ton of provinces. Like, it actually might have more provinces than Magna Europa, which is the mod that we've been playing uh, on stream recently. So I'm not too sure why they have so many like it's a little bit strange yazov is dead tearing the streets of leningrad as chairman yazov was attending a state tour in the recently opened european Libra uh, liberation museum one of the supposedly loyal guards opened fire at the head of state killing him almost instantly who will rule the uh soviet union now doesn't really matter and the indiana governor disappears which is one sec where's indiana you're indiana yes so the governor's just disappeared which I don't know, it seems bad to me. Governor of Indiana, Kathy Davis, has seemed to disappear off the face of the earth. Uh, failing to attend any meetings at the state assembly, her chief of staff traveled to her rural home to, to ensure that she was well, but instead discovered that one of the most powerful women in the Commonwealth has nowhere to be found. He proceeded to inform the uh, appropriate authorities who are awaiting confirmation from President Chomsky to initiate an investigation. However, a head of state doing such a thing would be seen as intrusive to states' rights, despite it literally being the only way to investigate the whereabouts of state leaders. Well... I think it makes sense for probably to start an investigation. I, I'm thinking that makes a decent amount of sense. There's a new chairman. Gorbachev is now in charge of the USSR. So we'll see what that does for them. Because I think they go down... Um, yeah, they're going to go down this tree now. Philadelphia intercepts terrorist chatter. Counter terrorist uh, military divisions in Philadelphia have intercepted terrorist chatter from Indiana and Western Ohio, informing the president that Kathy D Davis's disappearance could be more than likely to be an abduction at the hands of the right wing or communist terrorist. As of now, they've been unable to determine whether this chatter represents the former or latter of our enemies. Chomsky is clearly determined to save his governor from certain torture and possible death at the hands of vile radicals. Tunisia Communist Party has been purged. Okay. Really, I don't think we care about what's happening in Tunisia. We apparently have bigger things to deal with. There's going to be some sort of uprising in the country. But we've rescued her. Everything is good now. A sudden raid in southern Indiana has led to discovery and subsequent rescue of Governor Kathy Davis with no casualties on our side and a total destruction of a small terrorist cell. With Davis on her way to Indianapolis to secure a motorcade, 
Rumors have been flying around around the country as people start wondering who could have taken her. Whether they were communist radicals or right-wing terrorists from the south, most citizens from Indiana are just glad that their faithful leader has returned with minimal injuries. President Chomsky is praised for his immediate order to investigate her disappearances rather than shying away uh, in an attempt to avoid anger from the old guard for intervening in state affairs despite his constitutional obligations. So I'm sure that's good. Hey, Indonesia, you want to trade us with some rubber? Sounds great. Princess Diana has unfortunately died. Uh, 1241. Apparently the exact same way that she died in real life. There's also a lot of uh, events in, in this mod. Correct, we're still only in March. Kathy Davis returns to Indianapolis. The adopted governor arrived in Indiana capital just a few hours ago via motorcade, but she required time to rest her second home and regain light energy lost from the lost in those terrifying days. Now that the, now with that restored, she returned to state assembly in order to deliver a speech to her loyal colleagues and in turn a frightened people in Indiana. As they're telling almost every detail of the horrific and truly life threatening ordeal, her closing remarks calls for her people of Indiana to rise up against terrorism and face our fears of resilience. A standing ovation from the state assembly was seen on television sets across the entire Commonwealth, with every citizen captivated by the speed and efficiency of our police and bringing her home safely. So I feel like things are going pretty okay. Uh, we probably also do want to have, let's say, two divisions just surround Washington, D.C., because we don't owe in Washington. Currently, that is owned by uh, the South. Governor makes yearly pilgrimage. Vermont Governor Bernie Sanders has made his yearly pilgrimages to the grave of his wife and children. On March 8th of 1990, when Bernie was on a goodwill trip to Portugal representing Philadelphia's new government, Radical Socialist and Central Committee, uh, Central Committee Alliance Governor of Vermont orchestrated a significant purge of all his opponents within the state without any approval from the Capitol. He illegally used state troopers to round up all of his opponents of the Central Committee and had them shot. These included his wife Jane Sanders and three children aged 19, 15, and 14. Wait, am I reading? Well, bring up, what? Uh, Bernie arrived back to the Commonwealth of Indiana News and only days after President Chomsky immediately removed the governor from office and had him trialed by the Central Committee and reluctantly called for their allies' execution by firing squad. Every single year, the current governor makes a program to the Grays, vowing to never let those who took so much from him take so much from the country again. 20 years. A, a sad day for, uh, Mr. Sanders. Okay, Princess Diana's funeral. Does that... Because I know the United Kingdom has an event... For okay, so the sat whatever assassination is supposed to happen has not happened quite yet, which kind of determines what which way the United Kingdom goes. The White Phoenix. Indiana secret police have filed a report on the White Phoenix. A mysterious figure, grouped uh, Governor Davis told them. Elder Catra spoke up with ominous fear and admiration. While not much is known about the apparent leader of the crushed terrorist cell, President Shopsky will surely wish to be aware of any further developments. Perhaps this is, was the White Phoenix's grand scheme, and its failure was hopefully send them spiraling into obscurity at the hands of other terrorist leaders of the American Republic and abroad. Well, I'm going to say that whatever this um, event is, probably not a... Uh, I, I, th I think you should be fearing a little bit more. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, so we probably want just an extra research speed. I think that just makes perfect sense for us. Let us go for... Capture Cypher? Demolition Expert. You know what? We'll get you going. We're, of course, we're going to send you straight into the American Republic. Send you to Atlanta. Let's see if you can get, like, literally any information on this. Let's just get some uh, basic stuff here going. Extra military factory. What do I need? I need support equipment. I need tanks. So we're going to put five on tanks. Tanks are just good. They shoot things. And that, that's really all you could ask for, I would say. How long will it take to build this wall? May 28th, 2011. So we still got about a year left. Rising Eagle, well known. Okay. Don't care about what's happening in uh, in Ireland, unfortunately. I apologize, Ireland, but you don't matter that much. Vermont insurgency ends. Since 2008, the insurgency has designated the people of Vermont, forcing them into watching behind their backs and fearing those who may have been their friends for many years, and infected the lives of every single citizen, preying on the fears of the unknown. What are terrifying attacks could lunge out from the darkness? But in the ongoing 2008, the ended exactly how it began, with an attack of unprecedented proportions. During the early months of that year, fanatic supporters of the conspiracy theorists, claimed to be the victim and almost perpetrator of the greatest American terrorist attack in history, gathered in the mountains to fight against their government. Their first move was to directly attack the capital, Montiplier, unleashing devastation upon Bernie Sanders' official home in the center of the city. The governor's house was partially destroyed by two bombs that they on the site, and that murdered the governor himself. Forcing our loyal public services 
he was not at home at the time, unbeknownst to the terrorist. Now, two years ago, and now the tables have turned. The Norris military raid on the mountains of Vermont. After hours of explosion, fire, and shouting, all the those all those inside were murdered. For the first time in the Commonwealth's history, Governor Sanders issued a shoot to kill order of those inside, telling the media they simply could not be allowed to live for the sake of the people. Finally, it is over. A single political power point. And once we have 150, we can actually change some stuff here. So, civilian economy, you're garbage. Get the hell out of here. Go to, to uh, Parch Mobilize. I think that seems okay for us. And Chomsky meets up with Sanders. President Noam Chansky uh, flew to Vermont today to meet with Governor Bernie Sanders in order to congratulate him for his historic victory over the insurgents. The 2008 to 2010 terrorist movement will be remembered for the years to come. And the commander in chief made sure that his political frenemy was aware of Philadelphia's infinite gratitude for ending it alone. Not once were Commonwealth troops used in the campaign uh, against that disgusting conspiracy theorist and his gang. With Sanders opting to only utilize state troopers. The president arrived at the governor's house for a brief televised meeting between the two prominent politicians. But a private trip to his nearby woods gave him time to recall fine memories during the 1988 revolution. When the two briefly worked side by side. This is the first time since Sanders' ascension to becoming the most powerful person in Vermont that chopped to set foot in the state. But since this historic victory, it will certainly not be the last. So, how am I going to get like, more recognition? And how do I remove like, this corruption? We have so many modifiers. We can't do anything. Like, I don't... Yeah, no, everything only happens. Okay, apparently, stuff's, stuff's just spoiling underneath the surface in Libya. Because you are President Sanders' president. You are Bill Gates' president. You are... The Automotive Council is in control. And you of the Central Committee has been dissolved. So there, there's like a lot of ways this could go. Even like, there's, so there's four options there. There's three options here. And then that splits off with like two options. Like there's so much actual content. We have mixed weaponry. Yes, make you into modern rifles. Thank you very much. We have two research slots. 2010. Which means we probably want you going. And then after that, let's go. I mean, it's basically the same tech. Just with like some graphic designs. Just better artillery, I think, makes a amount of sense for us. Because right now, you're 16 combat with, which is, like, awful. But I don't know if we can really change that at the moment. What are you guys? Are you also... You're 12. Don't worry about that later. We have no manpower to do anything about that. The May Day attack. On this splendid day of celebration, the American People's Commonwealth has been attacked at the heart of its greatest city. From just before 9 in the morning, a hijacked aircraft from Chicago International collided with Tower 1 of the National Economic Center, bringing it with a terrifying explosion of fire and debris. As New York's waking population stood in shock and horror at the sight of jumping workers in, in, in flames engulfing every floor near the observation deck, not take long for the second speeding jet to hit Tower 2. At this point, the entire nation and much of the world has turned into breaking news of the terrorist attack on American soil, the first of this scale in history. Every minute, emergency services rush to the scene, attempting to take thousands to safety while dwindling resources available. But the almost an hour later, all those watching must have been gasped simultaneously. It's the most horrifying thing to be seen on television. Tower One came crumbling down on top of itself, killing th uh, thousands within and too many below in the building, already struggling to escape the flames that trapped them within their offices. Minutes later, Tower Two fell to the same demise in a similar fashion, tipping over almost at the very end and colliding with the nearby building, killing a hundred more. Now that the unprecedented attack, the cloud clears, the world remains in utter shock. The tragic attack on our humanity, no one is quite sure what will happen next. Does that mean I can actually do something here? Yes, it does. And that should complete automatically because we have so many points just saved up. Uh, why? Look how many things there are. I don't think I actually... I do some, I have some other stuff I can do. Okay, well, let's... Let's... let's, let's Okay, thousands of people have volunteered in New York. Congratulations to them. International airports are closed. That sucks. Um, Charles, let's, let's just read, like, people are calling the president. Thank you. Um, people, people, yeah, people are sad. Understandable. Let's read this one because I think it's probably going to be the most important option for us. Chomsky meets with emergency services. While President Chomsky was hiding during the attack of New York's National Economic Center, it didn't take long for him to convince his chief of staff and military leaders that he should return to the address. Uh, the shattered Commonwealth. He arrived in New York just a few hours ago on Air Force One to deliver a short speech to the local press, but quickly continued on his way towards Manhattan. 
The chief police fire and ambulance awaited their commander in chief's speech, but instead of Chomsky decides to simply meet with the emergency service workers to both help and emotionally support them during this testing time. In particular, eight men and women of the fire department have committed suicide in just the past day after experiencing the most shock and horrific event of their careers. The president made a brief statement to Journal City Hall after being uh, with the bravest with New York for more than two hours. He has expressed he's expected to address the nation as soon as he returns to Philadelphia, but there could be more work to do in the city. He had so devastating yesterday. So there's three things we can do. The American Peace Act. We can investigate Chomsky or fire the New York governor. New, York, New York's incompetent governor fails to stop terrorist attack from biggest city. We can either fire you, which I think leads to uh, Bernie Sanders becoming president. We can begin an investigation. President Chomsky is at fault for the death of thousands. Or we just go for the American Peace Act. With authoritarian new guards scrambling to take control over our uncivil commonwealth. Time for President Chomsky to finally enact his duties of his office. So you are the Ameri you're, so you're the Anarcho Syndicalist. I'm assuming you will lead to Bill Clinton, or we just go for Bernie Sanders here. Fortress New York, level nine forts is absolutely insane. Yeah, you um, you dissolve this. So this tree leads to you. And then you make like a big defensive alliance, but I don't think you actually declare war on anybody. You also make a big faction. So I'm not too I'm not too sure exactly which one we want to go for. Being able to core stuff pretty easily. You allow us to core stuff. You also give us a lot of annexation CBs. Do you um because you, you do lead to both. And then I think you also lead to something similar here. So. I think. Let's fire the New York governor. Well, Bernie Sanders in charge. And the president's speech. The essence of humanity in this testing world is not how we do battle or how we bring the fight to our bitter enemies. Because by bringing violence and horror to our enemies does not elevate us. It demeans us. It brings us lower than anyone on this blue marble. And yet we would still choose to stand upon a pedestal and claim that this commonwealth and its followers are supreme above all. No, that is not the essence of humanity, I believe. I know that for so many living in fear of multiple cream inspectors of the Atlantic and f uh, from the Atlantic or from our southern borders believe that the foundation of humanity is the ability to rise up against the ashes, to rise up from the bitterness and hatred of our enemies, not with spears, but with the arsenal of freedom, of knowledge that we are the humane. They are the inhuman and that they are the demons ready to slaughter thousands in the name of their wicked leader and her wicked system. Standing upon a podium, a city struck by a tragedy, I realize that the great poets of the, of the year is gone knew about our world and i realized that our rise is not unlike the poetic justice of anything written about basic humanity in its testing time today i remember tennyson's lucy tennyson's ulysses and the all americans of the east coast and west coast and i speak it not from my heart but from the hearts of millions we are not now that strength i wish the old days moved heaven and earth that we are that which we are we are one equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate but strong in will to strive to seek, to find, and not to yield. President Chomsky, New York. Hail to the chief. But I do think that's going to be a good time for us to end this episode for today. So thank you for watching my Anthem. If you've enjoyed, put a thumbs up. Now enjoy, Chloe, thumbs down. Or you subscribe, and goodbye.